What's going on riders? Cody from Motorcycle MD, and in tonight's video we'll be getting into the topic of clutches. We'll be using my CL450 as the patient, as I've been experiencing some clutch problems from the get-go when I brought this thing back to life just a couple months ago. topics we'll be going over are what to look for if your clutch is going bad. Are you experiencing it currently? What are some of the symptoms of that? Or if you've decided, hey, I want to get into the clutch, what are some parts that I'm looking for as far as where, what's worn out, what's burnt, and what should I be changing when I'm actually doing this repair? Now, some bikes are different than others. Of course, the CL450 will be a little bit different from what you're used to, but regardless, the principles are the same. Some require special tools, some require some impacts or some holders, who knows? The manual will tell you that specifically. What I just wanted to get into is how I'm changing my clutch out, what that looks like, what you can expect, as well as some professional fundamental knowledge that you should know when you're looking into your clutch's system. I'll also be adding in a quick little trick that I do on all of my clutch repairs to make them just a little bit better than what they were from stock. Oh man, look at this. Glove works HD. Let's get into this. Smote clutch on the 450 silver bullet. The reason why I'm going after the clutch, if any of you guys followed any of the old CL stuff that I had in the videos that I had um, when I first got it going, the clutch was frozen. Been working fine ever since. It kind of slipped at, you know, wide open in fifth gear, which is a very easy sign to know that your clutch is giving out on you. It started to stick again, and I don't like that. Um, and when I rode it the other night, I was with some guys, and I went to blow by one of my buddies in third gear. It just slipped all the way through third gear. This has got to be the original clutch on it from 1970. Um, it's got 8,600 miles on it. As far as I know, the tech hasn't been working until I fixed it um, with a new cable, so it could have more. I don't know. But I'm tired of the clutch. I want it to grab like it should. I'm having some other kind of funky problems with it, so let's go ahead and get this bike up in the air, and we'll go over some of the parts I got and steps to take. All right, so I'm gonna leave the oil in it. It's gonna lose some, of course, when I take that case cover off, but I'm not gonna drain it all out. I literally just did an oil change on it the other day. Now, the one thing I do wanna add, if your clutch is completely smoked, you'll probably smell it in the oil. I would go ahead and change that oil out because it has tons of clutch material in there that you're not gonna wanna run through the system when you're all said and done. So, that being said, the parts that I got, all factory Honda. There's no reason for me to go anywhere outside of Honda. Um, I love their their equipment, and I'm not going to get a Barnett clutch or anything. That it's nothing against them. Um, I would just rather have Honda stuff because I am a full advocate of Honda parts. So I got all new steel plates. Okay, parts alone was right around 160 bucks, um, but. All new plates, steel plates that is, all new fiber plates. The only one that I could not get that Honda was not selling was the very, very back plate. And uh, honestly, if I really, really was anal, I would go after it and try to find, you know, some kind of aftermarket one that someone makes. But I'm just going to roll with it. You know, it's my bike and uh, I can do what I want. So, but normally I would, of course, try to replace everything that I possibly can. And I also got some brand new springs here. So it would be kind of cool to see what a brand new spring length is versus an old one. Um, and kind of do some figuring out of as to what's failing on it. I'm pretty sure that these fiber plates are going to be smoked. And there's a steel plates are probably a little bit warped too on it. It's not completely smoked, you know, but it's enough for me to want to go after it. So 
So I'm just gonna start removing some stuff. Again, you may not need to do all of this, but I just want it out of my way, like especially my rear brake pedal. I want that kind of down and swung out. So I'm gonna loosen this up here, back this all the way out. My rear shock is leaking, which I just now noticed. This is why there's oil all over the swing arm. You old thing. I'm gonna push this lever down. Give me some free play back here and pull this out and down. Remove this here. At least it's staying oiled from my shock. Thanks shock. So now I can have full maneuverability of this. So I, I can take this out of the way if I want to, but let's move this Kickstarter out of the way. 12 millimeter bolt. Actually, we're gonna stop right here because I wanna do something with these plates before we keep going so I can use my time wisely. I have a pan right here. So I'm gonna clean it out. So I'll take that, grab some fresh GN4 1030. Let's put a little bit in there. This is just the container I use. It's all about efficiency, man. You know, you don't wanna be cracking open bottles and dumping them, cracking open, but dump it, cracking open, 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 dump it. Let's take these fiber plates. And we're, we're just gonna let them soak in this oil while we get to the problem. Put that in there. And what you guys will see when we get into this clutch is a little trick that I've done to kind of stiffen it up. I know that you can probably get stiffer springs and whatnot, but I don't really care about that because I do a little shim trick with it that you can almost do with any Honda that, I, that I'm aware of. Shadows, 1100s, 750s. As long as the shim fits, it will work. And it actually does a pretty good job. Now I just want these um, plates to soak up any oil that it can so it's not going in dry. You know, just a really premature overheat in a way, really. Get them all saturated. Make sure that all the sides are covered. Awesome. I, feel like, I kind of feel like I'm cooking. You know, we're gonna prep that real quick. Then we'll come over here and chop it up. I'm really not worried about soaking these because when I go to install these, they go in between each fiber plate and they'll have oil on them then. But what I will want to do you get a catch pan, put it underneath this cover because I know, like I said, I'm going to lose some oil. That looks good to me. Let's go ahead and remove my, and try to keep track of me, obviously, where your Kickstarter was. It was right up against the case, just enough clearance for the bolt. So it's good to try to remember that. What I like to do on these is take them, give them a couple wiggles, just maneuvering it back and forth without pulling the bike over on top of you. Ouch! Man, I freaking wrecked my fingernail on this thing. I'm gonna take this foot rush out of the way. Yes, I know it's missing a pad. I suppose I'll use a magnetic tray. And see, we got a 17 millimeter nut right here. Let's see if I can zip that off. It's actually one of the engine mounts. Washer, nut engine mount will stay put. What you will want to be careful of is this is directly connected to your brake switch. In here, you probably can't see it because of the lighting. So just unclamp your spring from its stay and down at the bottom or up top, whatever's easier for you. Might actually be easier to take it down from the top. Mine's rust, look at that. That thing was barely holding on, man. Look how rusted that is. Well, gotta get a new one. All right, so now I should have full movement of here. My brake lever, go ahead and bring this down. I'm gonna tie it around the foot of the center stand. There, look at that. So much room. Now, let's go ahead and attack this case. I got some different bolts here and here. Probably somewhere else too. It's Phillips head screwdriver. I got two 10 millimeter head, six millimeter bolts there. Um, but I'm going to use an impact driver, manual, it's got a number three bit on the top, okay, and these are actually not too tight. They're barely tight and they weren't leaking. Gotta love Honda. Alright, carry on with the chlorophyll.
Now, getting the case off. Maybe mine will come off kind of easily, but more than likely, it won't. On the newer mo motors, mm, Honda likes to put little tabs for you to get some kind of mallet on, like a rubber mallet or a place to use a slap hammer at. On these older ones, they don't, but there are some lips that you can kind of use. Lips meaning, if your case is meaning, meaning together like this, you have a little bit more of a lip on one side than the other, being the engine cover case side. So like there's some up top of here that I use, and you can probably disagree with the way that I get the cover off. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not gonna be whacking on it with a hammer. I'm just gonna use a small flat blade, something small, nothing crazy. Just trying to find one of these. And if, if I'm gonna use this tap method, I'm gonna use one of the top ones. If you use, if you use the, the bottom ones and you have to go at it with a freaking blow torch to get the cover off, um, you don't want to score up the, uh, at least, at the very least, the bottom mating surface, okay? Because the oil, that's where the oil is puddling. So up towards the top um, is a much safer bet. Just find a, a small lip that you can kind of get a driver on. Let's see if I can use this. And you'll kind of hear the case make a drum noise. seem to get the case cover to pop loose. I'm gonna come from the other side. I'm gonna get right on this upper lip here with, with a longer flat blade. That's long, baby. Yeah, I heard a little something. Let's come at it from over here again. Kinda hear how that noise changes. The seal has been broken. I'm just gonna carefully wedge it out from all around. I'm gonna come from this side and this side. Try to save this gasket if I can. I have a whole brand new gasket set, but I don't really wanna tap into that yet. You really don't have to remove this cover if you don't want to, by the way. It's just a way to clean it out and make sure that all this is still operational. Maybe change an O-ring out if you need to. It's not a necessity to get the cover off. Didn't rip, that's what's up. All right, hello clutch. So from first view, I don't see any pure, like pitch black burnt fins on this clutch. On a clutch that's just completely smoked out, you'll see the fins, like here and here and here and here, they'll, they'll be like almost pitch black, just from them being overheated to the max. I don't see it crazy bad right now, but something is definitely up. All right, so let's go ahead and grab these bolts here, four bolts. This is what the, the springs will be behind here, so it's very important for you to know that when you are taking this clutch outer plate off, this pressure plate, that you're taking them off in small increments at a time. Don't just zip one out, zip one out, zip one out. That's how you crack this plate, okay? So just very carefully, kind of ni nice and even as you work them all the way out. Just kind of, kind of do it in stages. So I'll break them all loose. and kind of work them out each at a time. Now they're all the way loose. I can kind of smell the clutch right now. It does smell kind of burnt. Probably the factory original bolts. I'm not gonna change them out. You can if you want to. Really worried about seeing some crazy stretching going on in the bolt, like someone over tightened them. And I think I'm the only person who's actually gone in this clutch before, so I'm gonna reuse them. So here's the springs. Take these out, one, two, three, four, and... My washers are still in there, so let's pull this plate off. The whole clutch should come out with it. I just barely got caught on the lip of the centrifugal oil thing, so if you wanted to, you could shift it into gear like that. I can kind of bump turn this, but um, you can kind of turn this whole motor through whichever way possible that you can, and just to get these fins to go past the very corner of this, okay? Let's lay this clutch out and have a look at the damage so first, I'm just gonna visually inspect, all right? I got no other plates in there still, which is good. And what is important is to know the orientation or the order that you're taking them off, okay? So this will come off first. No real overheating or anything done crazy on that, which is good. But these smell burnt. Oh, 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 before we keep going, here's my little uh, spring tensioner trick. 
These are spark plug washers off of a off of GL eighteen hundred spark plugs BKRs, and you can remove them by just grabbing them with a pair of pliers and twisting the spark plug off of them. And they're all the same size. And what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll, I'll take them, get them bunched up like this, and I'll go to like a, a press and kind of just press them one nice soft time so they're all pretty much the same. And then I'll just stick these down in here, one at each hole, and that will almost like it elongates the spring a little bit, it makes them a little bit stiffer. That's just my trick. Again, I can do it on any of the Hondas. As far as I know, I've tried it on a Suzuki, it did not work because these holes here were tapered inward and uh, they did not fit. So that, that's just my, my little trick of how I stiffen up the springs on it. But these plates look pretty burnt. Kind of smell them. They don't smell too bad, but what I'm looking for is some dark blackening on these plates. So these are obviously pretty black, but I'm, I'm talking about on the steel where I can see signs of overheating possibly. And I really don't see anything too bad. Not yet at least. Mm. Honestly, I thought I would see a lot worse, but we're gonna take some measurements. This one's getting a little bit darker. And of course, when you lay them out, which I'm not doing right now, but when you lay them out, obviously go one over like that, grab this one, go right back over like that. So when you go back together, it's all in the same, if you're gonna swap things out. So here's, here's I think where the clutch was frozen at, right here, you see these lines? There and there, and that 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 was some trouble. They're all getting a little bit a little bit darker in tint, but there's definitely some marks there. I've seen a lot worse though. I'll tell you that. Here's that one ring that I could not get, which is the one that looks the most worn. Some real heavy wear right here, and it's the one that I did not get. See this dark mark right here, all the way around? <sighs> of course, Hunter does not sell it anymore. I'm gonna go with it, man. I, I mean, I, I have to, because this is my ride home. Great. But, let's check out these springs real quick, and we can get into measuring some stuff out. See if those fiber plates are too worn out or whatnot. Brand new spring, out of the bag. I'm just gonna stand these up side by side. Honestly, they're not too far off. They're not too far off at all. I'd say they're right around the same length, but I bought them. You don't always have to replace the springs. I usually only, only replace springs when I know for a, a fact that the clutch is completely smoked. You can smell it in the oil. The clutches are just black as night. The springs get overheated and cooled down and overheated and cooled down from the clutch slipping because this clutch slipping and these pads and stuff wearing under load is what causes that slipping and that, and that overheating. And the overheating causes obviously premature wear here in, on the friction pads, but it heats up this metal here and it almost causes this, I mean, and it does, it causes this metal plate to warp slightly. So that's why you, I always say go after the plates, friction and the steel plates, okay? Signs of a, of a smoked clutch are engine RPM increases, but your speed does not increase. A weird funky smell that you've never smelt before, usually, when it's completely smoked out. You can get situations where, it, let's say your clutch is adjusted perfectly as far as the free play and the cable goes, because you want a little bit of free play in that clutch lever, not just full on all, all, all the time. It's got, it's got to be a little bit of movement there where it's not doing anything to the clutch. Or, and you may find that one day it's fine and the next day all that free play is gone because these plates and these clutches have warped and now they're all taking up a little bit of space. So they're dragging and they're constantly slipping. And you can shift it in the gear and all of a sudden it'll start, it'll start going. And you have free play there and this, that, and the other. All your free play is good in, in, in your line and in your lever, 
but when you shift it into gear with the clutch pulled all the way in, it just kind of creeps forward. This is on a manual clutch system that I'm talking about, not a hydraulic clutch. That, that could be a different problem. But if it's not, if it's everything's adjusted right and you're having that kind of issue, it's more than likely a, a clutch issue, okay? What I'm also going to look for is on these, on this clutch basket, can you see these fins here? You may notice that there are some wear marks in line where that plate kind of sat or where all these plates sat in here like this. And what happens is when people are dropping the clutch or just really over time, use and misuse will take these plates and it causes them to rock back and forth or lock in. Because when you drop that clutch out, it sends, all, it sends a shock to your whole clutch system and it, and, it, and it locks like it should and it grips and gets your transmission going, but it takes these plates and it goes bam, bam, bam. And, and over time, that small amount of play wears into here, okay? And that can cause little grooves, almost like little mountains or hills or valleys in all the separate plates. And what, what that will do is when it gets really bad, and you go to release the clutch and pull the clutch in and disengage that clutch, these won't necessarily free float as well as they should because now they're kind of stuck inside of that gully and they'll just sit there and kind of lock in. But um, these ones are, are, are not that bad. Usually we recommend just replacing the whole hub if it's available. If you have really, really deep pitting, um, if you don't want to, um, what, what I've done in, in, in the past on older like ATC 200Xs and um, things that you cannot necessarily get the hub brand new anymore. Um, just take a file and I'll carefully or a Dremel and just very, very lightly just try to even that stuff out on both sides all the way around. Obviously the hub will be removed. I don't want to get any shavings or any of that crap inside of the motor. Completely removed and I'll just carefully bring these back at the right angle at the way that, that, that these are cut out and all of that jazz and just slowly take these down very, very small, minute adjustments to kind of bring it back into where it's nice and flat. Okay, if it's too far gone, it's too far gone. You done jacked it up. But that's where that kind of wear comes from as well. That's what I'm also looking for. All right, so as per Honda manual, um, they give you a couple of different clutch inspections that you can go by. Um, friction disc inspection, backlash, uh, clutch plate distortion. What I'm, the two things that I'm concerned about with just the age of this system, or this bike, um, is really just the clutch plate distortion and the friction disc measurement. So they say that the standard value of the thickness of the friction plate, okay, friction plate, the thickness of that, is a certain parameter. All right, I'm worried about the serviceable limit. Replace if under 3.1 millimeters. Now, I have a feeling that these are not going to be underneath that. They may be, but <clears throat> the way that they were sticking together and not unlocking when I pulled the clutch all the way in, I don't care. I'm replacing it because I know that, that that was the problem. I mean, that clutch sat engaged for almost 30 years. Okay, This is a good measurement to take um, if you may want to save money and not replace the metal discs, I always replace them. So I always recommend replacing them. I never will tell you not to replace them, but this is a check um, that you can do on a very, very flat surface. And they want you to use a feeler gauge on a perfectly flat surface and take a feeler gauge and start measuring around this metal disc. Just not, you're not trying to slam this thing down there and measure it like that. It's more of just a little bit of pressure and just to keep it flat and measure it with a feeler gauge to see if there's any warpage in it whatsoever. That's a great way to check warpage. I'm not going to do it because I have brand new ones and I don't care. Okay, but what I will check just out of curiosity is the thickness of the friction plate itself. So they say that replace if under 3.1 millimeters. I'm just going to compare the old with the new by using a digital style caliper. These actually aren't that expensive. Make sure it is zeroed out. Make sure it is reading. I'm going to retract it and push it back together and hit the zero button. Take a friction disc and just lightly get one of the pads in there 
and measure 3.5. So it's not out of service limit, but 3.5. Let's grab a different one, 3.5. So as far as the book goes, this is 3.4. They are within spec, but I believe that they the material is glazed, is full of sediment that is not allowing it to grip as well as it should, or is causing it to lock itself onto each other. Again, I'm replacing it. But that's a check that you would make. Let's measure one of these brand new ones out. I mean, the friction material just looks so much better. This is at, again, 3, 4. It's also probably because of the pressure that I'm applying on this thing. Same, same amount of space. Same friction material there, but it's just the way that that one's responding. You can actually just look at it. And the way these things, these two things look, this one looks black and used and burnt, but this one looks very new and uh, eligible bachelor to go inside my bike. That's all the explanation I need for that. So what we will do is we're going to go ahead and reinstall this stuff back in here. All right, so first plate that went on was this tapered one, which is the one that I feel like has the most wear. I'm going to install it. I'm going to reuse it. If I can find a new one, I will. And I'll replace it then, but right now, like I said, this is my ride home. After every steel disc will come a friction disc. Now you'll notice that on your steel disc, there's like a, uh, a rounded side and a flat side, okay? I put the rounded side facing towards me. So what I mean by rounded is if you were to feel one side compared to the other, this side's more rounded than this side is. I'm going to put the rounded side towards me, all right? So next will come a friction and then a steel. And we will just repeat this over and over again until everything is set in its way. And these friction discs don't matter if it's this way or that way, okay? But even though it was all in service limit, you know, as far as the friction goes and all that stuff, it, there, there is still an issue, okay? And that's why I'm replacing it. Even though that those checks that they're showing me tell me one thing, I don't trust it. Because I know how a clutch should feel. I know that it should not be slipping under load like this one was. I know it's not the oil. I'm not, I, I'm not using synthetic or T9, whatever you guys are using, that's so controversially better than what should be in there. I didn't mean that negatively. You guys can use whatever oil you want. I'm going to stick with Honda GN4. All right, so our clutch assembly is reinstalled. We can go ahead and put our pressure plate back on. But what I will point out to this is knowing, you know, that it's, it's fully seated and fully flush. All right, so when, when you put this plate on, this plate should sit nice and flush all the way up against that base, okay? All the way up against the, these other discs. Almost like there's no free play. If I put this in one small turn to the left, you notice that I can't get it to go on. Okay, it's not seating flush. So making sure that you install this thing correctly, do another 180 degree, lines up with the little fingers hanging out for here, is how you know that it's on all the way. All right, so you just gotta make sure that you, that you do have that. All right, then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and install my makeshift stiffer spring, which is a little spring hack. Put those on, put the new spring in. Now these bolts do not take a lot of torque at all. Okay, so you don't need to hammer them in when you're installing them. I mean, it's, it's a very, very low torque, probably between, I would say, shoot, six and 12 foot pounds. Not a lot at all. You just want them to really seat. So I'm just gonna, again, same order of how you took it off. It's gonna go on, you know, one at a time. Don't don't button one all the way in and the other one and start going around like that. It's just in a star pattern or X pattern. Tighten, tighten. And for me, my bike, I'm just gonna do one quick hit. There, 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 and there. It may be more, it may be too less. Okay, so just make sure that, that they seat and I would give them a little quarter turn on each one, okay? The goal is not to round those things off or snap them off inside the hub, obviously. So just a nice seat, a little quarter turn on each one, that should do you. So those are tight, which is good. 
um, what I'm going to do is just clean off this bottom portion of the case. Get as much oil out of there as I can because I know it's going to want to drip down, but I want to put a nice clean bead of silicone on there and oil tends to interrupt that. But I'm going to clean this area up real quick so we can start going out to the case cover to put it back on there. All right, so this is when I'll install the case cover and I do use a little bit of silicone because I'm going to reuse the gasket. And I, I, like I said, I, I have a brand new gasket set to redo the whole motor and I'm just not prepared to use it yet. You know what I mean? I'm going to wait until I want until I want to go into one of these motors. I'm actually thinking about building a race motor out of it, but I'm going to take some contact cleaner and just rub it along this get this gasket here so I can't get off any oil residue or old silicone. There's there's some on there already as you can see, but I just want to get off the bigger pieces. I, like I, again, I'm not too too crazy concerned about it. If it, if it leaks oil, then it's, it, it's my own fault. You know what I mean? If it was a customer's bike, I would, I'd have a new gasket and I'd be ready to go, you know? But it's my bike and I'm gonna make do with what I can. The gasket's not, you know, cred incredibly old. It's a fairly new gasket. Actually a factory gasket that we had in store, in stock from back in the day. New old stock, as they say. I'm actually way more anal about this than no normally, which is it's gonna kind of bug me. I really don't want any oil on this gasket at all. I'll go ahead and dab some. This is a Hanabon High Temp. This is the red. This is what I use for everything. So I'm gonna put most of it around the bottom gasket. Just kind of use, put some on my finger, wipe it around here. Very thin layer. I mainly just want it around that bottom bottom portion is what is all I'm worried about. Sorry I'm kind of rushing this guys. I'm kind of under a time limit, but I, I didn't want to not shoot this. Put a little bit underneath where it came off right here. That's good enough for me. I'm gonna grab a fresh clean rag and we can kind of do this in one quick motion. Make sure all this is back in. Make sure that you didn't pull this Kickstarter spring or gear out. Make sure that your shifter is still shifting. Back there, and nothing's out of alignment. That's back in, our bolts are tight. Double checking everything. Snap rings back in. We're gonna clean this up one more time and kind of go all on at one time so there's no oil that can seep down on this mating surface. So go one more time around here. Soak up what you can for a quick install on hopefully a dry surface. That's dry, grab the cover. Align your Kickstarter shaft seal on there. And get it on there real quick. All right, we'll go ahead and put these bottom bolts on. Now there are different bolt sizes for as you make your way around the case, but I'm just gonna get these bottom ones in first. And honestly, that's really it, guys. I mean, you should go in the reverse order of removal. Make sure that your clutch is adjusted properly. Making sure that you do actually have free play up at the clock at that top handle. This one's a little bit different because of the maneuver prong that they have down on the left cover. Making sure that all that's good and your free play is right, the manual will tell you exactly how to do that. Maybe I'll shoot a video another night on how exactly to adjust that to make sure that it is good. Um, but I'm gonna button all this back up and what I'm gonna do to tighten these bolts, obviously you wanna tighten in a uh, star or crisscross pattern. Don't just go around hitting it like this all the way around. But I'm gonna get all these, you know, hand tight. And what I do is take my manual driver that I have here making sure that it's in the direction of it as if I want to tighten and I'll just tighten it with one or two quick hits. And it kind of puts a little bit of torque on that Phillips head without rounding the head, the head off. Two quick hits, no, nothing crazy. And that's really as tight as, I'm, as I want to take it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to wrap this up. I have to get out of here. I have a date with an amazing woman and yeah. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button, comment below. Tell me what you thought. But be sure to subscribe to the email mailing list. Getting ready to launch a membership site, which is gonna be pretty awesome with tons of more content that's not on YouTube. So be sure to e grab the email mailing list. Go to MotorcycleMD.com. And you don't wanna miss out on that. I'll tell you what, man. It's gonna be a lot, a lot of great content that I'll be sharing on there. Not about necessarily Honda 450s, but you know, just an all around general knowledge that 
took me years to get that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the best way possible. So get out there and ride, be safe. As usual, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys quality tips and tricks for my daily rider and your next build. See you guys later.